Okay, let's see how we're doing in Emerald. Obviously, people like to meme the rank for good reason, but at the same time, they're still higher than Platinums. That's right. Uh, not quite Diamonds, though, not at all. And we're going to see exactly what you Emerald players have to do to take your game to the next level, be not insulted by the general community at large, and get yourself that nice shiny Diamond border. Now, we have a Viego versus an Evelyn, both top-tier meta picks at the moment. Viego, really damn good. Evelyn, really damn good, but with different skill sets, right? And I think that's the most important thing here when you talk about meta picks in Emerald. People get a little bit too hung up on them, like, oh, so-and-so's playing blah, 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 and, you know, someone else is playing this champion. It doesn't matter. You're still the skill issue in your games, no matter what champion you're picking in this rank. You will start to notice, though, in Emerald, if you play as the Mordekaiser goes onto the Yone, tick, 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 that's why you chug your potions. Oh, well, that's why you chug your potions, because maybe you do live in that scenario. Uh, keep an eye on that if you're the Evelyn and, of course, the Viega. We know that the Yone Flash, we know that the Mordekaiser Mordekai used everything. And here is where things get interesting already, because a higher ELO jungler that's of the ganking variety might be more inclined to say, look, this guy's going to try and shove this out with no subs and Jonas TP back in here. Maybe I can capitalize, especially seeing as he's most likely going to full send this into the turret, and he's not even doing it with that much intensity. So if you're a Rek'Sai, you know, once she gets buffed a little bit, all right, and uh, maybe you're one of those other ganking junglers, Lee Sin and Elise, you know, maybe this is something we could do, because of course, no one has bought yet. And being able to punish this Mordekaiser before he buys and TP's back, well, he doesn't have TP, but if he has TP, is huge. Now, if we can gank him here with no TP, you can get the lane back in Yone's control such that Yone will be ahead and hit level six first. The Viego, on the other hand, can do nothing about this, right? He has to keep going all the way down to the bottom side, uh, starting top, going bottom, full clearing in both directions. Let's see what the Evelyn does here. If she tries to capitalize, you absolutely must head over to vukayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle div every game you play, click the link below or head to vukayu.gg. Obviously, the Mordekaiser here will now siphon off down and put a ward, and we'll see that. So now we know what we see. This is the problem as well. This is good by the Mordekaiser from an Emerald perspective. The guy knows, like, look, the enemy jungle started down here, sequencing up. I gotta be careful. So he goes and wards. Good job. Now the Evelyn has to go all the way around, which might still be worth the invest if she can gank mid lane or if she just wants to fall back to the scuttle afterwards or if she clears quickly enough. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, but it looks like she didn't even notice. And again, remember, it doesn't matter if it's warded, if you have a good ganking angle, you can just commit. But because Mordekaiser you can really retract and go back to base, it's just missed opportunities. Now the Viego, instead we'll go to the bottom side here, nice stun with the Rel, and we have the nice little quick kill by the Ezreal, actually pretty good for us. It's nice to get the kills ourselves, but we're obviously happy with the Ezreal, snacking some for himself. Evelyn will go back to base after doing the Scuttle Crab, and now the Viego is going to translate this into a potential mid lane gank, but obviously if the Zoe's intelligent, and again, this is something that will happen in Emerald, you will see this uh, shift in laners kind of being a little bit more aware about where junglers are. I would have preferred the Viego just to commit to warding this up, maybe looking for this if possible, otherwise just going back to base, you know, that's that's fine, because the Zoe here is, it's a huge base for her, denies the Viego, we should have a ward on this Grump, which means now we would see the Evelyn go in this direction, which means our mid lane Ari and the Rel would have seen the Evelyn go into this situation, and maybe they don't die. And now you can argue, well, in Emerald, they're still gonna... No, it's not true. If you honestly had the ward here and everyone saw it, all right, you'd be in a better situation. Because look, Evelyn comes out of base, all right, and no one sees anything until here. But you're telling me that if you warded this Grump as Viego and went back to base and pinged it off 300 times at your mid lane fight with the Ari and the Rel, they don't back off? I think they do. I think they do more often than not, and even if they don't, you lose nothing, right? That's the thing. If they don't listen to you, it's the same as if you never warded in the first place. So you might as well take the possibility that they actually listen to you. Now, obviously, the Viego compromises his own pathing here to rotate over. Not something we want to do. We know that the Evelyn's got to reset, go to the bottom side. Uh, that's where those camps are going to be. Well, not reset, but just, you know, move in that direction. She really rushed Ethel Wispy, I guess, with the Lich Bane. I got I to gotta reshift my focus a little bit with the Lich Bane Rush Gaming, but this is fine too. 
this is fine too because obviously no one's really going to pay attention to uh viego ease when they have the scuttle vision and you know you can go around it and obviously you can just walk around this wall and not be seen so if evelyn is playing it correctly like i don't see the yone wastes his e for zero reason to like we know that he's on grubs this is really dumb from him again it's not jungle diff you're just bad junglers you can tell your lane is this if you press tab you would see the you see there on the mouse where my mouse is on the top on your scoreboard, if you press tab, you see that going up. One, two, three. You only get the global notification at three, but you can see one, two. So why do you need to ward it if you can press tab and see that one, two is going up? Short circuit. So you can just <laughs> chill and go and ward, like use your E to ward this brush in case if Jaeger want to come dive. Obviously, the Evelyn is now sequencing up. I'm going to give that up. That's fine. But this is a waste of a ward from the Yone. And very, very... Cruelly, uh, he would die from his perspective. Cruelly from his perspective, he could die from dives and ganks because now he no longer has protection. Obviously, he's warded here as well to protect against the dive. But I honestly think if you've got two warding totems here and you're not using them, you know, it shouldn't be like, well, I, it doesn't matter because I put it in the, the grub bit. You didn't need to put it on the grubs at all. You didn't need to. You could have used it earlier or later. It doesn't really matter. Don't waste wards for zero. Especially when you have that information. Now, the Mordekaiser has, has warded up. The Bard is rotating with the Evelyn. She is level 5 here, and this is the problem. You really want to be level 5 in 5 minutes, ideally. Um, going back on a, on a ward, Bard is going to go, and we see you very clearly. That's a full commit. Dr <laughs> taking, like, the Evelyn is just losing all of her advantage. And the, the, the Mordekaiser is going to give one back. <laughs> he gives the Evelyn. He's going to give one back, but the Evelyn dies. And now the Viego says, okay, well, you know, now you're in great tempo debt. New concept I'm talking a lot about. I'm going to make a lot of videos on this. I talked about it in the Platinum one, so go watch that if you're confused. But the Evelyn had the ability to reset quickly, go back to base, and contest down here, get six on the blue, and be... She should be six on the blue at the very least, yes. She could be involved in the side of the map with her level six, while the Viego's also down here trying to get level six. Yeah? And instead, that's not happening. Because she decided to stay out with the Bard and die and give the Mordekaiser something back. And again, Mordekaiser doesn't mind a little bit of death if he gets that stuff. Now, the Viego here is level 5. She should be 6 afterwards because she got those kills in the mid lane. Now, we have no idea where she is. And she can go, of course, and start to flirt with death and threats. But, uh, what in the living hell? Okay, look, junglers. It's pretty damn simple. Emerald junglers. Hey, I got 6. I want to use my ult. But hey, my support's mid lane, my ADC's in base. So why are you face-checking a Rel and an Ezreal by yourself with a Sheen after with Evelyn with no Dark Seal? Uh, I don't get it. I don't, I, you don't need the Sheen until last, really. It's not a good thing to, to rush. Like, why are we even in this situation? Now, you ult and you die. Ezreal Arcane shifts onto you to get that kill, which is really, really good. As Most Ezreal's don't do that. Now the Bard is compromised. The Evelyn has literally no one else to blame as the Viego rotates over beautifully done. Smooth animations, we love it. I love seeing good Viegos, or at least people who are loading Viego and playing it well. Really, really big, big stuff here from the Viego in terms of, let me relax. And I think if you're a Viego player, we recap this early game, relax. Do your first clear, do your scuttle, get your deep vision, go back to base, go up to your camps again, as we have another fight here, obviously it takes a lot of damage, now they ever come straight out of base again. I don't know why she's full committing to the side of the map. No ult, no Zviego's there. Just go top side, counter jungle him. You know he's here, just run across and counter jungle him. Gank top lane, maybe you like offset your, your nonsense. So, Viego, full clear, take, ward, base. Evelyn goes mid lane, can I help? Nah, do this, do the grubs, cool. Finish my quadrant, go back to base. I don't think you necessarily needed to go back to base in that situation. You could have stayed out to get six and maybe try, but it's not so bad because you got Noon Quiver and everything for this plus the dragon. That's fine. Wait for your opportunity to gank and to, to get this shit done on the bottom side. He did a good job. Evelyn, though, full clears up, misses the opportunity to do something early, which you can do, especially if Viego's going down. You can do this stuff. Uh, sees wards, goes over them, goes back to base, rotates here. This was obviously a nice gank, should have been spotted by that Viego, doesn't matter, sequences all the way up, sits in the ward here, dies unnecessarily, goes back to base, comes down here, gets six, and then dies unnecessarily again, and baits her bottom lane into death also. So as a, as a laner, right, you know, as a jungler, excuse me, when we flame our Yone there for terrible wards, for not paying attention, for dying, cool, right? We all agree we get to flame the Yone for being bad. 
But then we also need to flame ourselves for being bad too. Because if you bait your laners into suboptimal terror shit plays, and they die because of it, it's on you. Now, while it's not on you in that they should have just recognized, look, Evelyn's being dumb, let's back off. You can't yell at your monitor and be like, why'd you die? Just li like, why were you dying, you know? So if you're allowed to in to make a dumb mistake as the Evelyn, then you can't yell at your teammates for doing the same thing. You know why? Because you're all Emerald and that's what you're gonna do. And if you're not Emerald and you're Diamond, then you're not gonna make those mistakes. And that's the difference right there. And I think if that sounds a little bit harsh to some of you and you're taking that a bit personally, then good. Because that's how I spoke to myself when I was once uh, Emerald, a long time ago, Platinum equivalent, you know, because we didn't used to have Emerald 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I had more hair then too. But the point was, you've got to be honest with yourself, you know? And now the Evelyn is on the top side, misses the counter jungling opportunity because she decided to go for wolf sequences to the top side, which is great. Viego just comes out of base with Kraken, so he uses the mid pride to go for this. However, however, now we need to shift the insults, not insults, the constructive criticism to the Viego. So he's like, right, 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 right. So I saw the Evelyn here. I'm tracking her CS and she died. Okay, so she must do wolves and go top side. I also see her on this vision. <laughs> now I'm going to go top side here. I have prior top. Let's do the grubs. Look at your bottom lane. Ain't no Rel rotating. Nobody's rotating. I don't know where Rel is down here. Rel should not be down here. Bard is top side. Ari is half HP. She's got what in pocket? 435 uh, gold. So not a lot of gold, but you look at her resources and she's uncomfortable here. She wants to go back to base. Now, if you're asking me why she's going back to base, I don't know. I don't really think in this particular case she needs to. I think we can definitely flirt with delaying this 4v4 because the Rel is moving. Ari is there. Yeah, she's half HP, but maybe this is a fight we can still win as a squad, as a team. And you have to be able to make those calculations. But as soon as your Ari does not make the calculation, all right, you guys are talking four dimensions and she's talking Euclidean and she's just in 2D. You can't force the math, right? It's just not going to work. It's not going to fit. You have to adapt formulas for motion and everything else into the dimensions you're working. And in this case, she is just going back to base. So you can't force it. And obviously now, we are very, very compromised. The Evelyn still dies to the Mordekaiser because he's fed. The Viego still escapes because he's uh, Viego. The Mordekaiser now dies, and now, of course, it's a 3v3, but Viego's compromised. And while his ult is up again, nice ult from the Rel there, the Viego's just getting poked out and killed because, obviously, Zoe's pretty strong. Yone's Yone. Bard is still doing the DPS on the back line. Arya was late to the fight. She went back to base, ladies and gentlemen, to buy uh, Fiendish Codex. That is the worst base you can ever do. And now... She's gone back to base, bought a suboptimal minute item that she's going to build from, come back to lane with TP, joined in the fight, and she's at the same damn HP she was beforehand. <laughs> Why did you base and TP? You ended up in the same position. Now you don't have TP, and you don't have enough to finish your itemization. You don't have enough to finish... <laughs> uh, yeah. and this is the kind of shit I'm talking about from a jungle perspective as well. This goes for lanes, it goes for uh, junglers... Think about your base timers. Why are you basing for a minute component when you're just going to lose a lot of tempo and be in debt? Now, we see the Evelyn come back to the top side directly to force the grubs. I do 100% kind of think that in this situation, the Mord and the Viega should have postured and delayed. The Ari should have stayed and the Rel should have rotated. And maybe we could have done something there. But as soon as we had numbers disadvantage and it's 42 back up. Do your camps, maybe loop around if it develops better, but I don't mind giving up three grubs, especially as Viego here. Just go doof, da da doof, da da doof, doof. You know, d gank this, go counter jungle here, gank this, take the dragon. Give them the three grubs. It's better than dying and losing all your advantage. Now, Evelyn is rotating with the bird again, and this is not stuff you can necessarily predict, but honestly, the mortar's 3-3-0, three, three, despite being goon squatted multiple times. And I'm okay with that, you know, if I'm the Viego. And I'm okay with that if I'm the mortar. I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm absorbing all this pressure as long as my team does the good stuff then we'll be okay. But again, this obsession, Ral's rotating, Ari's not even in the picture. Um, you know, Zori's rotating. See, I don't like this. I just give them the three, do this, kill the Sivir, shove this up, take this, take this, take this, loot back for this. Like, you let them do grubs and play games, and you've gotten your whole bottom side quadrant, you've stolen her bottom side quadrant, you've killed her ADC, you've taken their dragon away from them. You're two dragons to zero plus three grubs, which is more than enough. I coached the Viego the other day, Literally two days ago with two grubs versus enemy team having four. And they were rinsing turrets. Absolutely rinsing turrets. It was incredible. I'm like, wow, imagine if you had six. He's like, yeah.
but that also tells me, look, if I've got two, I can still be in a good position. This plant hits, so we know that the server's there, and he's just gonna go for the dragon. In vision, half HP, everybody knows that you're on the dragon, right? Everybody knows that you're on the dragon. We're just forcing fights over objectives and coin flipping mechanics, which of course, you do get better. <laughs> oh, he dies. You know, our team cleans up and you can be like, yeah, good job team, yeah, but it's not Clash. It's not Clash. So... It's solo queue. You're not gonna rely on your team doing this stuff, are you? Eh. You can, and it's fine, but... It's not the right play. The right play was to let them be distracted by the grubs and the, and the, and the bed bugs from Paris, go all the way down to the bottom side, do all of these things, and then just... Win the game through map control. And then you'll be so strong as Vega, trust me, if you did that, bought some itemization, went back into the next fight with say Herald or whatever, it, you'd be so strong you'd get a triple kill, maybe even a quadra kill, and you'd be like 701 and things like this. Much better situation to be in. I don't think you needed the ult there. You might as I don't think you needed the ult. And Vega's like, yes, I got four grubs and they have two. I am winning. Like you don't measure your victory with Jeremy Clark's and voice grubs. Yes, you don't this doesn't matter. Now we hold, go all in onto the, uh, the Yone, you know, we're still in a good position here, but I feel like we're really compromised. I mean, we finished cracking and sit there with like four minutes ago and we have done nothing since and it, it looks like we've done nothing since. And the Evelyn's just able to farm, farm, farm. And even though she's 144, right, um, you know, there's another universe where she's, you know, 411. This Evelyn has not played well. She's made bad decisions. Uh, yeah, she's made some bad decisions. Um... The bard is rotated with her a bit. She's, she's not really understood where she needs to be. She's kind of blindly gone in. Uh, now, see, now there's a fight here, and the Viega's like, but no one wants to do the Herald. It's just... It's... No one's considering where the enemy team is, or where the numbers are, where they should be. They're just seeing objective, and they just rotate and fight over it blindly, which is a very emerald thing to kind of do. And that's what I'm saying. If you're a diamond player, diamond-capable player, you're going to see these pockets, these openings, where you can get way more than the objective is worth. For their for their time investment and like like now you're sitting in a bush with no scanner being used no control were being used and why would you ever do that as a jungle if you're standing still in a brush you better damn well know it's not wooded you better damn well know and as, as far as you can tell you better be 99 percent sure 90 percent sure that it's not wooded if you're not sure don't sit in it like the viego here is just looking for this this herald and scratching his neck a little bit thinking you know like, can we do it yet rel goes in but no one's there. Tank moment. Team? Team question mark? Team? No, you just, you're like, why are you going in? You're inted. <laughs> but now the Viego gets it. You see, now he starts to feel the pressure, like, okay, I'm just wasting time. Uh, let me just go farm my jungle while they take the Herald. Perfect. Right? I wouldn't go back to base here. I'd take the Scuttle Crab, I'd go into the blue side, and then I would push this wave up, and then I would go back to base. I feel like him going back to base here to... Just go Trinity Force. Go Trinity Force. Get your black clay for your wits end afterwards. There's no need. There's no need not to go. Like just go Triforce here. End of story. No questions. No reason to go Trinity. Uh, uh, wits end. Excuse me. But yes, finish. Snack. Snack. Shove. If they end up fighting a lot more, diving top lane, doing other things, then of course you can push the turret, and you'll see what you can do with four grabs. Take it. Definitely take it. And if, that puts me in a great macro position. Whereas if they rotate, when they rotate to me, I can reset. Now go top side. There's nothing for them to do here at all. No dragon, no camps, no scuttle, no counter jungling. So they're going to be forced to float mid lane into top side, where I already exist with vision control, camps taken, maybe even counter jungling this, maybe even just diving this one. So that's the kind of stuff you really want to look for um, if you are looking to be an emerald jungler. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, it, it should do. One hopes. Obviously, you know, in, in, in courses and prepared content, I, I slow it down and we have a lot of different examples. But, you know, for quick YouTube videos, we sprint through this stuff. But I feel like that's that's where the value is, I hope. <laughs> I just want to provide value, both free and paid, at a high clip and a high level for everybody. And hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody can learn and climb to their peaks. So, I mean, I know in the, in the private Discord, like... Um, with buffs and different metas, people climb all the time at different rates, but it's, it's cool to see. People have different mains, such wide variety of playstyles. Just learning and climbing, it's just nice to be around. Always advice surrounding yourself with people that also want to improve. See, now we're sitting in a brush and they use the control, where like, everyone's just watching this. 
Anyway, yeah, back to the game. Because we've got a stalled moment. Dragon spawn it. It's like, if you're sitting still waiting for dragons, waiting for objectives to spawn, I hate it. You know, get the wave, push the wave, hit the turret, force them to rotate. Everyone comes in, flank, kill her. Right? Force something. Everyone's just sitting and handshaking till objectives. Just force the stuff that matters. And you'll notice that you end up having better map um, plays for your team. Everyone goes in here, really absolutely does nothing. Horrific combos, no proper Ws, just QERs, didn't even use all three Qs. Out of position, Vega goes back to the back line here, turns off the dragon, which is the right call, turns back into the Evelyn, so I like that he's going in and out. He puts the charm onto the Zoe, uh, instead of just going into the Sivir, which is what he should be doing, but he'll grab the kill anyway. Well done to the blue team. They had the lead, it wasn't the prettiest team fight, but they did a solid job actually getting in. Um, that was a beard hair, actually. Scraping my neck. <laughs> it's like, something's touching my neck. And then for five minutes, something's itching my neck. For a second, I thought it was a spider, and I was like, how long can I hold this? Turns out it was just a beard. Such is. Such is. Now, in the meantime, Yone is pushing the top turret. Alright. And we're falling back to our raptors. I don't think we really need to overreact to that. I think in these cases, if you kill everyone, I prefer to take the blue, catch the wave, shove the wave. If they're all dead. If they're all up, obviously I won't do that. I prefer to take the blue, take the hex deck gate down, uh, loop back around for the Krugs and Raptors, then reset and go top side because we've got time for the Baron. Like the next objective that we want to fight over is the Baron. There's no reason for us to be there 20 seconds early, 30 seconds early. I mean, there is to set a vision, but you can easily take this, take this, take this, reset. Again, all under control. Now go top side, control this, set your pick and do the Baron. And that's what I would do to win the game. Now, Viego's missed there the blue, he's missed there the Krugs. And if they were all dead, he missed the wave push. Again, big problems. And now he's here on the top side, face checking, but we're fed. Now, we do die, but this is a scenario where I'll honestly tell you, look, I don't think you should be dead there. I don't think you should be blind face checking. I think we should have been there a little bit later, so maybe we the fight pans out differently. But that's a fight where, like, oh, I'm the shit. There's three people. I'm dead. Do as much as you can. Mechanically, kill people, set your team up for success. That will happen sometimes. I'm just saying, in this moment, you can kind of say, okay, well, you know, whatever. But in this moment, here is the Evelyn or the Viego. That's not where you want to be, right? You don't want to be baiting your, in your team to bad fights, bad situations where your team cleans up. In this case, everyone was grouped. We knew what would happen. The next objective is Baron. So it's a, it's a different scenario once you get to this phase of the game. Now, again, our mid game procedures are not that great. We're not, you know, like, look, we can't hold this by ourselves. Everyone's back in base. So just go Krugs, Red, Raptor, sync up. And by the time you've done that and synced up with your bottom lane, you will be a three-man mid lane, but you've got three cams. So a lot of this, this video is now devolved into, devolved, evolved into, how do I get my econ in this mid-game phase when there's nothing to do? And, and I think you've seen a lot of scenarios that have described where you could have pushed waves, pushed turrets, counter jungled, and taken camps, all three ways to get econ, waves, counter jungling, and your camps. At a clip where I think the Viego should be at least 190 CS. I think if he's not at 190 CS in this particular game, that's not good. And obviously the fights have not been perfect. That's why he's 535 instead of, you know, 802. But you're in the learning phase, you know. Now we're skirting the edges. Mordecai is pushing the Sivir. Look, we're going on the... Like, where is he going? Like, he's going here to the top side because Ari died. Instead of just staying here. Stay here. Pin the person out of position, shove this. You've got four grubs and three dragons. Push, 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 push. Let the Yone be. If he takes this and pushes onto this, I'm okay because we will take that by the time that happens and get to go back to base and cover. And now we get in here pressure to do Baron. And the Viego overreacts to the Yone instead of sticking with his bottom lane, pushing this up. And what happens is, oh man, it showed. What happens is Evelyn's and Bards will make picks and kill your ADC. And now fortunately, Fortunately, the Ezreal's really, really fat and the Evelyn's really, really bad. So again, we're a little bit lucky <laughs> from the Viego's perspective. Hey, you all know, just as well as I do, that in those situations when your ADC and your support push mid lane with no help, they die to the Evelyn, right? You know as well as I do that that's what happens. A little bit lucky here by the Viego, but still solid, solid game. Like, as Evelyn, why? Like, I'm not going back because it doesn't matter. Evelyn shows up briefly on Vision here after doing Wolves. We know she's here. Rol goes in. Again, out of position. Terrible flanking. Super far behind. No ultimate. If you're Evelyn here, this whole game is on you. You were in tempo depth the whole time. You misplayed it the whole time. You compromised it. 
the whole time, and you just never really did anything useful. Your builds were weird, you didn't farm enough, you didn't flank enough, you contested when you shouldn't have, and much like the Viego, uh, those things can come back to bite you. In the Viego's case, you had a slightly better team, but at the same time, you saw a team gap, right? So the Viego did more solid things early. He was 2-0-1, he was there for his bottom lane, he got the first objectives rolling, he got the first grubs because you made a mistake as Evelyn. So while the Viego isn't having the best impact now, that early jungle impact was noticed. And again, Ari hasn't done anything, right? And Mordecai has been goon squatted. And the fact that the Ezreal uh, got fed because of the Viego's presence and the mis Evelyn's mistake is the whole story of the game. Something that's all you need. Get your bottom lane ahead and watch them go. Those are great. Control the map, keep them safe, play well, and you're good. Now, of course, in Emerald, we have an Ezreal bottom lane and Rel holding the, the wave. Like, look, Viego, you can take the wave in camps afterwards, but... Yeah, this is basically an emerald ending, isn't it? Ezra bottom lane, Viego top lane, support holding the wave. <laughs> Evelyn just running around, it's just, uh... Is it anything useful? Bard's out of position. There we go. Yeah, it looks like... It looks like no one's really in a position to do anything this game. From the red team. Ari's just rage splitting the whole time. And, uh... Now we're gonna pull into Baron, which is the right call. Evelyn tries to steal it. I don't know why from behind. Uh, she has flash, right? So, if you're an Evelyn and you want to steal this and you're behind the pit, put your charm on it, flash over the wall, hit the charm with your Q and your R and your E and your smite, and no one will outsmite you. But instead, where is she? Why is she here? Right? Why is she that? I know the Rel's looking for her. But as long as you're a good Evelyn and you're probably here, you can be here right now. Like, honestly, even without the charm, if you just flash QER smite, 90% you get this, because already your R does what here? Uh, 512 base and 1228 against enemies below 30% HP. You've also got this, which is just 115 plus 8% max um, health damage, and empowered is 175 plus 13% uh, max health magic. Like, who else smites that? No one. And you get out because you flash in and you ult out. Now, the problem here is... No, it's no problem, sorry. I, I looked at this. But we do have ult. We don't have smite, though. Okay. Well, that is a small issue. Coach, by the way. But yeah, you should still have smite. I don't know why you don't. <laughs> Just slow reactions. And uh, yeah. I think they're FF. But I think we, we pushed to end anyway, no? Yeah. Okay, well, interesting game. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the Emerald playstyle. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.